Hey everyone, i um, going to do a quick video on applying for a license or some other things like changing a license uh, capacity or renewing a license, changing administrator, where you'll go to, to, to find that information. So basically, um, we're going to start off by going to ACA's website, and it's aca.myflorida.com. And I just want to say that you're going to see people possibly coming into my office, um, phone calls. I'm, I can't stop running our facility. Um, otherwise, I can't create. It, it's harder for me to create content. So it's okay if people interrupt. Uh, just understand that we're currently running our 32-bed assisted living facility and the training business at the same time. So you come to ACA's website and. Um, you do a search. Now in the search box you just start typing in assisted and it should populate if not assisted living unit is what you're looking for. And um, let me just pull up these stuff. So once you do that Assisted living unit. Now, <clears throat> here's where your final. They've always always updating information here. It's always good to come on here and see what's going on. Here's the new generator rule, um, talking about your requirements for generator. Yeah. And um, so for the licensing. Uh, application and forms, you'll click on the forms on the left hand side. And here you'll have your types of facilities, you'll just select assisted living. Okay, so here you have the application, the checklist, proof of financial ability to operate for ALFs with 16 or fewer beds. And then you have one of those proof of financial ability to operate ALFs with 17 or more beds. Those are going to be, um, I think applications get rejected most often for this. The um, When you send in your application initially, that's a big one. So you need, I would recommend if you're doing it is hire somebody who can help you put that together. If you take our uh, business boot camp, which we'll be doing, or if you buy our um, if you buy our our virtual consulting package, we have somebody that can help you do it and um, make sure that you have exactly what you need in there, especially for the 16 or less beds. If you're opening something like that, so let let's go ahead and start. You can go ahead and download the application form, the checklist. Uh, as you'll see here, is a ALF notification to change administrator is here. This healthcare licensing application addendum is another application that you have to include as well. And then the attestation of compliance with background screening requirements. Um, we'll take a look at these. Okay, so let's just start off with the checklist. Um, okay. So the checklist, um, this is for um, initial renewal, change of ownership, and change during license period. So you'll just have to um, provide information for all types. You'll see a lot of this information is provided on the actual application. So um, it's confusing the way they do it, but Basically, um, most of this information is provided on the application itself. So you'll go through the application checklist, but this is this supporting um, documents. It's also on the checklist as well. I mean, on the application itself. But basically, you've got... Um, whoops. I'll just go through them briefly, and then we'll go through them a little bit more later. General liability insurance coverage. So when you submit your application, you also have to have general liability insurance coverage in place. And if you go to our, our business boot camp or you go and you buy our virtual consulting, we'll tell you the best insurance providers that we use. 
um, and where to get that and how much it costs. But basically, you have to have it in place before you apply. And it'll be based on the number of residents that you're going to have, not the number of residents that you do have or um, you, you can't scale up. If you're applying for six residents, eight residents, you have to have general liability insurance coverage for that many people. The fire safety inspection report. Um, that sounds like an easy thing just on a checklist, but it's actually a pretty complex thing. Um, there's a few hard things in the application you have to understand. Um, and those are the things that, that take up the majority of your time and money to get. Fire safety inspection report is one of them. You need to get uh, a approval from your local fire authority and um, have the equipment or safety um, devices that are required. And, um, you know, it's every city is different. Every fire marshal is different. And you need to go check with them. That's the first thing I'll say. Find out what you need from them. We can tell you in general terms what you, what state requirements are, but um, it is specific to the city. They can pass ordinances that then, and the state law defers to the city in those situations. Um, so go ahead and check with your local fire authority before maybe even check your pick your location. Septic system or water supply evaluation report. So if you have a septic system or you have uh, well water. You're going to have a whole separate thing that you need to do. You have to be aware of that. Department of Health food permit, okay? That's for 11 beds or more. You have a certain tier. The health department has tiers of kitchen size, like a, a there's a group home which can serve up to 10 people, and then over 10, you go into a different tier, and then there's another tier after that. And they have different requirements. So you have to go to the health department and find out what type of reports you're going to have to submit. So the, this is the next one down is the Department of Health Group Care Inspection Report, like I said. Um, you'll have to have that in the package. So that means you have to have your application with the, with the state, I mean with the, the county health department. They have to come out, do an inspection. You have to have all the things that they require. And uh, so that's on there. That takes a while. You need documentation from local government providing compliance with local zoning requirements. Um, there used to be a form that you'd get filled out. You'd take it down to the city and they or the, the city building and zoning office and they would fill it out saying how many people you can have and if it's approved. They removed that because ultimately it's not up to the city. A residential home, for example, doesn't need approval. So they changed it. And uh, I think you would submit a letter stating that you did like a search of an area and you're in compliance uh, with the um, with the with the with the um, zoning requirements. So we'll take a quick look at that here. Let me let me just go ahead and open the application here. Um, Okay, so here's the application itself. This is where it says like provider information, name, mail address, phone number, all this stuff. I'll fill out all this information. Um, what type of business are you? Corporation, limited liability, contact person, uh, property information. So um, who owns the property? how you own it, do you, how, how do you have possession, you have to provide that with it, do you own it, do you lease it, um, the application type, is it an initial license, is it a renewal license, is it a change of ownership, that's uh, same same application, so, oh, there's dad, hey, I'm, I'm just making a recording really quick, okay, uh, um, so, Provider name. So here you'll do a um, increase capacity, decrease capacity, specialty licenses. This is where you'll add in your your nursing license, your limited nursing license, your limited mental health license, or an ECC. So you have to understand, especially for the this, this state exam, there's a standard license. Every facility has a standard license. That's the base license. And then there's additional specialty licenses on top of that which would have different requirements, but allow you to do different things and take in, take in different types of residents. 
um, LNS, limited night nursing services, limited mental health, and then extended congregate care, which is ECC. So it's actually easier to, to get these set up initially than it is to set it up after the fact. That's just depending on what you want to offer. It's easier to do it before than after. Um, and then you put in your, your number of beds. If you're ECC, you have to designate the areas uh, which are ECC. And um, then, the, then you'll get your totals. There's, there's a fee you pay per uh, bed, $64.96, based at, uh, on, on the time of the recording. It changes, so look at the application. I think when we started, it was probably $30 a bed. And then you pay a base fee. So here, here's the, um, the breakdown. It's a uh, standard license check, and then your 6496 times number of beds plus your 387.73. Total fees not to exceed 14,253. Um, and then you add in your specialty licenses, which if you do ECC, you pay per bed, LNS per bed, limited mental health. There's no fee, no charge to do a limited mental health. Um, the um, Increase, you'll do, this is the increased bed section here. And then you'll put in your controlling interest, the names of the people that are owners in the company, their percentage ownership, uh, board members, management company if you have one, if you don't have one, skip it. And then their board of directors, personnel, this is where you'll list your administrator. Uh, that's why, you know, you need to pass your state exam, get your administrator license, or have an administrator in place they want all that here core training do you have high school diploma or ged and uh, you'll need to include that as well in your package the high school diploma or transcripts or the ged uh, if you're a nursing home administrator you don't need the um, core training and then you'll provide your license number um, okay Disclosures, you can read through that. This is this application is really actually not hard. It's the other components that are hard. And um, another thing on top of it is a whole nother level of hard. Uh, there's three components to the application at, at minimum, four components which are hard. Fire, the health, the emergency plan. The emergency plan is when, when they come out, they're going to want to see your emergency plan which has to be approved, you need support facilities, now you need a generator, you need food storage plan, you need, and so we'll give you a template for a lot of those things if you upgrade or if you come to our boot camp, boot camp. but, um, and then the financial part is probably another hard part as well that you wanna make sure that you're, you're showing enough capacity to operate a facility. Now the consumer information is more for the general public, but this is your time to get your, your website in there, types of services that you're gonna offer. Um, and languages spoken, here's specialty care, you can select memory care. If your memory care, you know, you know your memory care guidelines are gonna be uh, Alzheimer's level one, level two, and then annual update for all your staff that are gonna be in contact and you can buy our subscription package and get that uh, pretty reasonable for your facility to be categorized as memory care. It's not as complex as it sounds. Um, okay, supporting documents, here you go. It basically, it has a few more things in the, on the application here. So liability insurance, health department, food, food hygiene, uh, documentation of, um, Zoning requirements pursuant to Chapter 419 Florida Statutes. So let's just take a quick look at that. Um, basically, it, it explains it all here. Um, just go ahead and Google um, 419, and I'll put a link in the underneath the video here. But basically, it describes what a community residential home is, it explains that if you're six or fewer residents, which otherwise meet the definition of a community residential home, they are deemed a single family unit and non-commercial. So basically they're saying that you can do this in a, a um, residential area. 
And then you've got to do your searches within a thousand feet of another existing such home with six or fewer residents or within a radius of 1200 feet of a, another existing community residential home. So how you do that is, um, let's just go ahead and, because before you select anything, before you buy anything, before you spend any more money, you want to go to type in ACA facility locator. Now I'm just showing you how to do it really quick. Okay, now once you get to the facility locator, you're going to select your, uh, your address. You'll do a proximity search. And so you can do proximity search. Okay, so I'm going to pick an address that's down the street from my facility here. And, um, and I'm going to put in the type. I'm just going to leave it as all types just so I can see everything. And here's the thousand feet. And it says here, please be advised that local zoning authorities may have additional restrictions and requirements not under the jurisdiction of ACA. So you still want to contact your local zone, zoning authority, but for submitting something to the state for application, um, that initial zoning form that they have is no longer there. So let's do a quick search. If somebody bought a property down the street and they wanted to open one right next to me, it would say, oh, Ocean Breeze Gardens is within a thousand feet. Okay, so that's how you do it. Uh, you can change the facility type and you search that way. Uh, let's go back really quickly to the Florida statutes here. Down at the bottom, it says basically what happens. Um, what happens when you do get licensed? Is, um, the state sends notification to the zoning office saying, hey, here's a licensed facility. Go ahead and read through this, uh, your requirements. And let me go back to the application. Okay. Surety bond, if you are going to be holding residence property over a certain amount, you need to have a surety bond. Proof of financial ability to operate based on your size. We talked about that. You know where to find it. Copy of administrator's high school diploma or GED. Okay. And that you'll always want to keep in your administrator's file anyway, because they may want to see that when they come and do an inspection. Proof of property occupancy examples include leases, mortgages, tr or transfer agreements. So you'll have to have submit it to them. If the property's in a personal name, um, then you'll need to have a lease from the person. So it could be your personal name, and then the, you will lease it to the business. Put a lease in it. It's easier, easier that way. Proof of property occupancy, yeah. Uh, certificate of, of authority if part of a continuing care retirement community. And then there's the healthcare licensing application addendum, um, which is very similar to the application itself. Um, required disclosures and approved repayment plan if applicable. Okay. And then you have an attestation. Go ahead and read through that. And then you mail it all, mail your whole package with your check to the, um, to the address right here. So it's really not that hard. Um, back on the here, I just want to go back briefly to this. Um, when we clicked on the assisted living unit, if you click on assisted living facilities, remember we clicked on assisted applications and forms. If you click on assisted living facility, uh, you're going to have more information here. So you'll have, um, Right here, use the renew online. So when you do your renewal, it's really easy. You can renew it online. So much easier than doing the paper application. Hopefully someday they do the online application, initial application, but now it's you have to do paper application initially and then a renewal online. Um, unlicensed facilities, big, big, big no-no. Felony, you have two or more residents. Uh, and even you need to check because this video as of this date, two or more residents, felony, 
I mean, sorry, more than two residents. And they're going to really be cracking down on them. So do not have an unlicensed facility. You can go to jail. And it doesn't take much. You know, uh, you have residents in your house and hospice comes in or physical therapy or family members, you know, they're not happy. And then they, they go look for other facilities. And then they say, yeah, my mom was over at the facility over on, you know, uh, Smith Street. And then I would say, well, what? There is no facility on Smith Street. So a facility that's existing, playing by the rules, is going to know that you're there. I hear it all the time. Uh, in the past, I haven't heard it lately. I think anything that's illegal is not a bit not around. So don't think you're going to get away with it because you won't. Uh, and people that come and work for you could could turn you in. So just be. Do not do it. Uh, there's in here. There's. Um, you have all the information. You'll have the. Um, here's a um, cooperative agreement. Here's a. Uh, I saw in here the 1823. Oh yeah, here. Resident health assessment. So you always be able to get an updated health assessment for them here. Um, and that's it. So I hope that helps. Um, once again. If you didn't know about our, our business training boot camps that we're going to be doing or our upgraded virtual consulting training, it's really worth it. We have a great team of, of consultants. We call them area experts. And uh, we can put you in touch with them if you want further assistance. Uh, if you're going to get into this business and you're going to you know, open your own facility, there's really no point in trying to do it on your own and make the same mistakes that, that I made and other consultants have made. It's going to save you a lot of money using somebody who can help you. Uh, so I highly recommend it. Okay, thanks. Have a great day.